Hello, my name is Julie Dawn Walker. I am the clinical coordinator and medical assisting instructor at Edgecombe Community College. The purpose of this video is to explain the ECC medical assisting practicum log to you and hopefully answer any questions you have about checking off the student um, on competencies that they need to meet in order to graduate. So if you'll click to the next couple of slides, you will um, hopefully get a better understanding of what is expected of the students and what I'm looking for um, as a medical assisting instructor and uh, clinical coordinator. Okay, so this area is where um, you're gonna be evaluating the student and there's several um, measures here. So the first area we're going to cover is the anatomy and physiology measure and record blood pressure, temperature, pulse, respirations, height, weight, length for an infant, head circumference for an infant. You may not have those in your office and that's totally okay. And then you also have pulse oximetry. Next is perform EKGs, venipuncture, capillary puncture, and pulmonary function testing. Um, you should be able to accomplish all of these in your office with the exception of the pulmonary function testing. I don't expect every office to be able to have that capability. Um, some offices do have it and some don't. Uh, next is perform uh, patient screening using established protocols. So that would be uh, just screening patients for COVID, screening patients for the flu. All of that would be an example of that. Verify the rules of medication administration, right patient, right medication, right dose, right route, right time, right documentation. All of those should be met. Select proper sites for administering parenteral medication. That should also um, be included. Um, so that would be any type of uh, injection or um, like a PPD, any anything like that. That where the patient, where the student is selecting a site to administer a medication that would qualify. Administering oral medications is um, self-explanatory. Administering parenteral medications, excluding IV drugs, which we are not allowed to do in the state of North Carolina. Um, so if they give an, in, an injection, an immunization, a TB skin test, any of that would be included. Instruct and prepare a patient for a procedure or a treatment. So that could be any type of procedure that you perform in your office um, or you are referring them out. As long as the, as the student is explaining and preparing a patient for that, it could be something as simple as a pap smear or a diabetic foot check, all of that qualifies. Assisting the provider with a patient exam, self-explanatory. Performing a quality control measure, that would be like running your quality controls in the morning on your glucometer or your, um, your PTINR handheld, anything like that. Obtaining specimens and perform CLIA waived hematology tests, so that could be like um, a mono test. Um, waived chemistry test, waived urinalysis, immunology test, waived biology test, anything that's clear waived, you should be able to check those off and you can check with your lab um, to see what all you do there. Produce up-to-date documentation of provider professional level CPR. Just have them show you their CPR card, check them off on that. Perform first aid procedures for bleeding. Um, now, these you may not have because um, these are kind of emergent situations. So as long as you're talking to your student about that, that will qualify and you can check that off under um, competent. As long as you explain that to them and then you guys talk about it, that should be fine. Um, so that was bleeding, diabetic coma, or insulin shock, fractures, seizures, shock, or syncope. Um, incorporate, 
incorporate uh, critical thinking skills when performing a patient assessment. So when they're doing a diabetic foot check, when they're doing a patient intake for triage, any of that will qualify. Incorporate um, critical thinking skills when performing patient care. Again, they should be competent in that. Showing awareness of patients' concerns related to the procedure being, inform being performed, they should be competent in that as well. Applied mathematics, uh, calculate proper dosages of medicine admi for administration, differentiate between normal and abnormal test results, maintain lab results using flow sheets that may be done electronically, document on a growth chart, um, Again, your EHR may do that for you. Keep track of patient's height and weight. As long as you guys go over that, you can check them off on that. Reassure a patient of the accuracy of test results. All of the applied mathematics should be checked off. Infection control, participate in bloodborne pathogen training, select appropriate barrier or personal protective equipment, PPE, perform hand washing, prepare autos, items for autoclaving. You may not have an autoclave, um, so if you guys talk about it, that's great. You can check them off as competent, or you can just put that you don't do autoclave at that site. Perform sterilization procedures, prepare a sterile field, perform within a sterile field, perform wound care, perform a dressing change, document proper disposal of biohazardous material, sharps, regulated waste, and recognize implementations for failure to comply with CDC regulations in the healthcare as long as you talk about those kind of things, you're good. Nutrition. Um, instruct a patient according to the patient's special dietary needs. So let's say a patient's got high cholesterol and um, you need to instruct them that they need to eat more grain leafy vegetables, cut down on saturated fats, things like that. Um, that's going to qualify for that. That can be checked off as competent in that. Show awareness of a patient's concerns regarding a dietary change. Again, um, you can check them off on that. Uh, uh, concepts of effective communication, they should be checked off on all of these. So use feedback techniques to obtain patient information including reflection, restatement, clarification, responding to nonverbal communication, use medical terminology correctly and pronounce accurately to communicate information to providers and patients. Coach patients regarding office policies, health maintenance, disease prevention, treatment plan, they should be checked off on all of those. Coach patients appropriately considering cultural diversity, developmental life stage, communication barriers. Again, they should be checked off on those. Demonstrate professional telephone techniques, document telephone messages accurately. Compose professional correspondence using electronic technology if they are communicating within the EHR or by email, that would count. Um, develop a current list of community resources related to patients' health care needs. Um, your office may have a set of um, community resources if you would go over that with your student um, and check them off on that. Facilitate referrals to community resources in the role of a patient navigator. If they're doing referrals, which they should be, should be checked off on that. <coughs> Excuse me. Report relevant information concisely and accurately. Demonstrate empathy, active listening, nonverbal communication. Again, all of those. Uh, demonstrate principles of self boundaries. Again, they should be checked off on that. Demonstrate respect for individual diversity, including gender, race, religion, age, economic status, and appearance. All of those should be competent. Explain to, the, to a patient the rationale of a, uh, for performance of a procedure. Okay, they should be checked off on that as long as they're um, explaining why um, a procedure needs to be performed. Manage appropriate schedule using established uh, priorities. All of these are administrative functions. Um, 
schedule a patient procedure, create a patient's medical record, organize a patient's medical record, file patient medical records, even if you're just scanning in, that counts. Utilize an EMR, electronic medical record. Input uh, patient data utilizing a practice management system. Perform routine maintenance or of administrative or clinical equipment. So just checking to make sure that um, things are in working order and notifying people if they are not in working order. That's going to qualify. Um, perform an inventory with documentation. You guys um, in all offices should be performing some type of inventory um, to keep your stock up. So that is going to count. Display sensitivity when managing appointments. Again, they should be confident in that. Practice basic finances. Perform accounts receivable procedures to patient accounts, including posting charges, payments, and adjustments. Prepare a bank deposit. They may not do that. As long as you talk about it, I'm okay with them being checked off on that. Obtain accurate patient billing information. Inform a patient of financial obligations for services rendered. Okay. Um, demonstrate professionalism when discussing a patient's billing record. Display sensitivity when requesting payment for services rendered. All of those the student should be checked off on. Interpret information on an insurance card. Verify eligibility for services including documentation. Obtain pre-certification or pre-authorization including documentation. Um, complete an insurance claim form. They may not do that as long as you, somebody talks to them about it. I'm okay with that. Interact professionally with third-party representatives, um, like an insurance company perhaps, if they have to call and verify coverage. Display tactful behavior when communicating with medical providers regarding third-party third party requirements and show sensitivity when communicating with patients regarding third party requirements. All of those should be competent. Per, uh, procedural, procedural and diagnostic coding, pers perform procedural coding, perform diagnostic coding. Um, if they're like going through on a charge slip or a super bill, an encounter form, and they're circling um, labs or procedures or uh, the provider writes down a diagnosis and you guys talk about that, that's going to count. Um, utilize medical necessity guidelines. Use tactful communication skills with medical providers to ensure accurate code selection. <coughs> Excuse me. All of those should be checked off. Legal in um, implications locate a state's legal scope of practice for medical assistance that's located on the AAMA website. You guys can look that up and talk about it, what they are and aren't allowed to do in the state of North Carolina. Apply HIPAA rules in regard to privacy and release of information. They should be competent in that. <phone rings> Document patient care accurately in the medical record. Apply the patient's Bill of Rights as it relates to choice of treatment, consent of treatment, refusal of treatment. If you have an AMA um, against medical advice patient, go ahead and check them off on that. If not, just talk about it and they can be competent in that. Um, perform compliance reporting based on health statutes. Report um, Now, perform compliance reporting, that would be like if you had to report something to um, the state health department for a communicable disease or a dog bite, and you had to report that. Reporting an illegal activity in the healthcare setting following proper pro protocol, you would just talk about that scenario and you could check them off as competent. Complete an incident report related to an error in patient care. Um, if they make an error in patient care, one, let me know, and two, you can check them off on that. Um, otherwise, just talk about what to do um, in the event that an incident report has to be filled out so that the patient will, or the, not the patient, the student will know what to do. Um, demonstrate uh, sensitivity to patient rights, protect the integrity of the medical record, locking the computer um, when they walk away from the computer, securing the computer, things like that. 
Ethical considerations, develop a plan for separation of personal and professional ethics, demonstrate appropriate responses to ethical issues, recognize the impact um, per personal ethics and morals have on the delivery of health care. They should be checked off on that as well. Protective practices, comply with safety signs, symbols, and labels. Um, demonstrate proper use of eye wash equipment, fire extinguishers, sharps, disposal containers. Um, as long as they can explain to you how to use them, they would be confident. And then last, use proper body mechanics, or not last, um, use proper body mechanics. Are they lifting things appropriately and things like that? Participate in a mock exposure event with documentation of specific steps. You could just talk about that and show them the emergency evacuation plan and things like that. Evaluate work environment to identify unsafe working conditions. Recognize physical and emotional effects on persons involved in an emergency situation. Just something to talk about. And finally, demonstrate self-awareness in responding to an emergency situation. All of those things are, you know, stuff you can talk about. So, in the event that this is something that you don't do in your office, if it's something you can talk about and get the student to restate and verbalize their understanding of that, that particular competency, I'm okay with them being checked off as competent. Um, because I understand that not every office is going to be completing um, all of these procedures. Okay, now this section, this is what you're going to complete uh, when the student completes their 240 hours of clinicals. Um, what type of administrative duties did the, patient, did the student perform? What type of administrative duties did the student observe? So you would just fill that out honestly. Same for clinical. And then this section right here is about me. It says, what type of oversight did the practicum coordinator of the medical assisting program provide for the student and the site supervisor? Were you able to contact the practicum coordinator with any questions and was there regular contact? So all you would just put there is whether or not I made good contact with you, if I stayed in contact with you and the student, kept you up to date on what was going on with the student, if the student was absent, things like that. Um, it's just basically a review of myself. And then here, this is for additional comments, and I like to put this here for you to write something encouraging to the student um, and just some advice for them. Then whoever completes that will sign, put their credentials and their title, and then date it. Um, the remainder of the packet is just for um, a a, an example of their journals and then their timesheets that you should be signing off on every week. So that is basically the packet and that's it. So once again, if you have any questions whatsoever, I want you to reach out to me by email or by phone. Um, my email is walkerj at edgecom.edu. My cell number, you can reach me on that as well, is 252-452-1045. Or you can reach me on my office phone at 252-618-6741. Again, if there's any questions or any um, concerns about a specific competency, maybe you don't provide it, you don't provide that service or cover that competency in your office. Uh, give me a call and we can discuss ways of making sure that the student is competent in that competency. Um, even just talking about the competency and the, you know, what it's about and just making sure that they have a good understanding of it, we can check them off on that. But otherwise, if you have any questions, please reach out to me. Thank you.